Good morning, Ms. Hab. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Chasen. Good morning. I don't know if it's good, but it's, it's morning. Okay. I have a broken thumb. It's not being taken care of. I'm sorry to hear that. We will get you taken care of here as quickly as, is it something that was broken when you, it was already broken and it needs medical the, attention or a new injury? The officer broke it when he bent my thumb back. Uh, trying to put the handcuff on. You ask me how it happened, man. I'm telling you the truth. That if you don't want to know, why don't you ask me? Question. Okay, the officer that arrested me broke my thumb. It is a new injury. It's a new injury. Okay. And it's not being even taken care of at this county jail when they don't have the facility to put a cast on my head. They won't send me out to the U of M or St. Joe's. And I don't understand why. This is the third incident. It was Mercer, a fractured foot, and now a broken thumb. And I'm still getting the disparities of health care based on my skin color. Well, it may have nothing to do with your skin color. It may have yes, to do it with does, your Yes, it does, ma'am, because anyone else that even had a potential fracture has went out to a different facility. They outsource their health care. I sit here and watched it, and I have a, it's evidently broken, it's swollen, it's, it's sore to the touch. You can see a bone protruding, and someone else had a, a lesser injury based, and they were a different skin color. So my disparity is based on the skin color. I know what I'm talking about. We're not going to sugarcoat this shit. Okay. So you have this is case 22-0167 SM. I'm reminding you that you are live on our YouTube channel. When we're done here today, everything will come off of the YouTube channel. And no I agree. I'm sorry? I said no problem, but I'm live. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's have your full and complete name for the record. Reginald Matthew Tucson. All right. And the public defender represents you in this matter. Um, so you spoke with Ms. Saab today, is that correct? Yes. Yes. All right. The public defender already represents you. They will continue to represent you in this matter. Uh, Ms. Saab, your appearance for the record, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Lemi Saab appearing with and on behalf of Mr. Tucson. Thank you. So, Mr. Tucson, on this file, you're in warrant status. Looks like you have another case that you're in warrant status with in front of Judge Simpson as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think that's a $10,000 bond. Is he going to see Judge Simpson today or he's going to see a magistrate? Do you know? Okay. Ms. Saab, do you know? Is it a magistrate he'll see? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. So on this particular file, Mr. Tucson, you were getting very close to the end of your case. You had a settlement conference, which is basically the last step before you select a jury. You have a settlement conference that was scheduled for September 22nd, and that... You failed to appear. Yes, ma'am. So when you failed to appear, the uh, court issued a bench warrant. Just bear with me here while I, I want to read the judge's notes here. No problem. Okay. So it looks like your jury trial was scheduled for September 26th. So probably the notices had already gone out to everybody. Your final step before jury selection was September 22nd, uh, a settlement conference and everyone else appeared except for you. Oh, so okay. What happened that you didn't come to court when you were supposed to come to court and where have you been for the past month? I've been moving into my place of residence, as if I don't know if you remember, I was uh, waiting for housing and I was moving into the housing. Not, not that I didn't remember the court date, 
But I got pretty busy and I, I, did, I don't have a computer, didn't have transportation to either try to make that court. And at the time, I didn't have a phone. I just recently got a government phone uh, uh, based on my income. So I have a way to actually call. And but by then, by, by the time that I moved in and got the phone and all that, I already had the warrant. So it was basically, you know, wait until uh, I come in contact with the law or turn myself in to law enforcement, which I opt on trying to get my household together. And which was whatever, maybe a mistake due to that I, you know, I, I want to get this over with. I want this adjudicated. I want this whatever is going to be done in the court and be over with it. So I basically just delayed the process by trying to take care of, of life, life needs, things that I thought was more important at that time because it actually pertained to me having a place to stay and somewhere to live. So when you missed your court date like you did at this stage in your case, unfortunately, your case has to rewind because... The jury has come and gone that was scheduled for that day. So you fall back to the pretrial status. Okay. Um, as I said, the PD will continue to represent you. We will reschedule you for a pretrial. The next available date that Judge Valvo has is October 31st. That's at 9 a.m. You That's are, if you're out of on on Halloween. 9 a.m. on Halloween. If you are out of custody, you are required to appear in person for that court hearing. Uh, I believe you know Judge Balbo's courtroom is on the fifth floor of our building. Yes, yes, yes. I've, um, well, every court proceeding that she's had, other than the one that I've been in jail, has always been in person. Um, I don't even know what Zoom is. I don't know how to download Zoom. I don't know anything about that, but every Proceeding so that courts, she is she is now fully in person. There are other courts that remain by Zoom, like yes. this one for first appearance. Your yeah. bond conditions are as follows: they remain in full force and effect. You are not to enter onto uh, any hospital property for the University of Michigan, except for appointments and medical emergencies. And all those conditions remain in full force and effect whether you are in custody or out of custody. You understand? Yes, I do. So I would be able to go for this broken thumb, right? Uh, that is not my choice. Well, that is up to you. That is up to no, I was just wondering because that's the hospital that I go to because I have Blue Cross Blue Shield. That's, that's, but this would be an emergency treatment. That it is provide. a broken, a broken, a broken bone is not an emergency. I'm just going to walk around that's without right. a cast. Mr. Tucson, if you don't interrupt me and let me answer your questions and let me complete what I'm saying. I'm not interrupting. I just made a statement, ma'am. I just said, is that constitutes an emergency, a broken member. You act like a child and fuck it. Is there anything else you would like to say on your client's behalf? Your Honor, the same um, kind of whatever he already touched on with regard to moving, um, being between places. And the last time that he was in court, he did have a fractured foot, which made it a little bit harder also for him to um move between the two places he is having some health problems um besides his thumb he did indicate to me that he has some intestinal issues and he's been concerned about going to u of m um with the clarification that um emergency services um are not something that you're stopping him from going to u of m for um his father is also um sick which is really concerning mr tucson but um I did explain to him with Mr. S uh, well, I did explain to him Judge Simpson's um, policy with regard to failing to appear in the bench warrant. 
that that's not going to be something that's taken care of until he sees Judge Simpson, that $10,000 bond. Um, so it would be in his best interest to just request a low cash bond in this case, just so that he can get credit while he waits because he, with regard to the other case, he's not gonna go anywhere until he sees Judge Simpson. So they may be able to see you on that warrant get you scheduled in front of Judge Simpson for this week, the 27th, I have no idea. But that $10,000 bond, I can tell you, the magistrate is not gonna be able to change that. So no matter what, you're gonna sit until your probable cause conference, that's their policy, which it sounds like you were aware of. Uh, your next court date for this court, again, is gonna be October 31st at 9 a.m. All of your prior bond conditions, they will remain in full force and effect. Um, and we've gone over those for the record. To clarify, you can go to the University of Michigan for an appointment, and you can go to the University of Michigan for emergency medical treatment. What we're trying to avoid is we're trying to avoid you loitering there, and we're trying to avoid you being there without a specific purpose and without an immediate need. So certainly your hand would qualify. Is your father at the University of Michigan being treated or he's somewhere else? He lives in the state of Alabama. Okay. Um, all right, so this is what I'm going to do on this case. I am gonna set a cash bond. I've looked through the file. I can see that there are several failures right. to appear in this file. I've seen you in custody a couple times on this file as well. And your judge directed a $10,000 bond. So that bond I will leave at 10,010%. And again, all of your prior bond conditions will remain in full force and effect. And I will put on your jail dispo um, the request that you be given medical treatment. Which hand is it? Your right or left? My left hand, and they're not going to do it because last time the judge asked them to see about my fractured foot, and they don't uh, they don't abide by uh, legal requests. I noticed well, that. I, yeah, I can't make them take you to the hospital, but I can certainly put in that request. Right. I mean, to me, it's kind of strange when their facility cannot facilitate it, but they let someone sit here untreated and then worry about why this person is trying to sue this facility yes, or try to do some harm to the people in the facility because they experienced some type of trauma and pain that could have been avoided from a simple hospital visit. Yeah, I, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't hear right. you. I understand. I understand. That that I'm not going to keep experiencing pain without transferring the pain to somebody else. Um, they will see you this afternoon. My guess is Magistrate Fink will see you this afternoon around 1, 1 to take care of the other case. And you can certainly ask her if she can assist and put it on your jail dispo as well um, that you are in need of some medical attention. Hopefully they'll do it. You know, hopefully they'll abide by it because I'm at the point where I'm going to just transfer the pain to somebody else. No, thank you. All right, you're all set. You can let the jail staff know you're done by standing up and going to the door. Mr. Chisholm. I heard you. Okay. And Ms. Saab, we have one other person in custody. Okay, and we are apparently we don't have paperwork yet for that person. Okay, I'm checking right now too, just to see if I have anything. So the court will stand in recess for the moment. Um, Mr. Tucson, I actually need to talk to the jail staff. I don't they, know where they are. Okay, can you stand up and go to the door and then they'll know you're done? Or do no. I need to call them? No. Yeah. 
you go back high in the Caucasus Mountains, when you go, you talk to me like that, high from God and the black man that sent you there. Hello, could you state your name, please? Reginald Matthew Tucson, Your Honor, and I'm trying to get care from my broken thumb, and this officer is talking to me in a very non-racial way, like he's a slave master or something. I don't understand this. So I'm I'm sorry that that's happening to you, and everybody keeps saying they're sorry, and then this guy, this this jail keeps just perpetrating this. I have an injury. I have injuries that I incurred here last time. I contracted Mercer. They didn't want to treat me. Now I have a broken thumb. They don't want to treat it. Mr. Tuesday night, I understand that you have a lot of concerns about the way that yeah, you're but I have this officer telling me to hurry up. <laughs> I can <laughs> barely get up because <laughs> I have court. I'm telling I know, you, I understand. Up, Unfortunately, none hand. of us here can, can do anything about yeah, what the officer's name, too. Okay, the, 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 his name, he was with Officer Mahalik. All right, the jail. The jail doesn't work for me. I don't have any. Authority. I know that they don't work for you, but you work for the criminal justice system that doesn't work for people of color. Okay, what I'm trying to say to you is that I don't have the authority. I know, ma'am. I know. I know. Okay. I, this is you, not you towards wanna, you. This is I not understand. towards you. You just want to. You just want to express your. It's not expression. This is something that I'm living. That I'm going through. This is not like an art expression. This is something that is persistent, yeah. a pattern, and it continues. And then when I try to exercise my rights, it's I'm impeding other people from going to court. Well, I'm a I'm a I'm a citizen of the earth. I have my rights and I have my due process time too. So if you're trying to tell me. To, you know, to rush my due process, that's not even fair. This is crazy, man. I need to just get out off this earth, off this, out of this country. This country is not for me. All right. I I hear your concerns. And I'm still not going to give me medical care, no matter what I say. You know, so I already know um, mostly just citizen does not, it's not going to reduce my bond, this, that, and the third. You know, I already know what's going to happen. This is just how it is. Yeah. You know, at least I can say he is fair and impartial because he punishes everybody. That's, that's one, one judge y'all have. That's one way to one look at it. judge y'all have that I don't, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, what bias you have, what you're going through. He's going to do what he's going to do. Regardless. That's right. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to lose everything. I mean, I have. Yeah. Uh, Rent the pay, right. and have children. I'm just gonna lose everything. I mean, they ain't gotta worry about it. Hell, I might end up dead in this in this joker, man. The way they trying to treat me, they might try to make it seem like I committed suicide and I never leave this place. That is what's going on right now. I feel that my life is threatened for for real because they don't care about my health care. When I had Mercer last time, I had two days. The doctor said that if I wouldn't have left that jail in two days, it would have entered my bloodstream and into my major organs and I would have died. So in my, my eyes, they attempted to kill me because they neglected to give me care based on the color of my skin. They can't tell me what other reason it was based on. All right, ready? Are you ready on this? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I ain't got no choice, man. We just be. Okay. They so, gonna kill me. I'm gonna die some type of way. I see this already. If it ain't an inmate, it's gonna be the fucking correctional officer. This is State of Michigan versus Reginald Tucson two two F five five one one zero. Your office was previously appointed. Miss Reed you may proceed. Thank you, Silvana Reed, Assistant Public Defender, with it on behalf of Mr. Tucson. As he stated, we did discuss the fact that there was a $10,000 bond set at the time that he failed to appear, and that that was not something that would be able to be adjusted. And so we would just like to ask for the next available court date in this matter. Okay, 10,000 cash or surety, probable cause conference is November 3rd at 9 a.m. Um, I hope that someone helps you with your hand. It's, yeah. it's not going to happen, ma'am. I had mercy. Each day I was in this facility, they watched the flesh get eating up more and more and more. And they kept putting a Band-Aid on it and said, this is all they can do. And, and I know that's a lie because if this facility could not facilitate it, 
they're supposed to outsource medical care because they are potentially and, and ultimately responsible for my health care, my security, my safety, my my uh my nutrition, my hygiene. And if they can't handle that responsibility, why do I keep getting locked up in this place? Why do I keep getting treated like an animal? It's not even a second class citizen. I am getting treated like an animal. An animal has more rights in a dog pound than I have in a jail in the United States justice system. And it's not because the animal is an animal, it's because the humans are humans that run this place. Yeah. And they're inhumane towards humans that they think are different than them. And I don't even know why they went to school to even uh, be in this you know, job capacity because my ultimate goal is to file a case uh, with the Justice Department and find out everyone else that's went through this and make sure they never work in this capacity again in the United States of America. Not even as security guard. Because I have never sued for money. I am suing for your livelihood. They picked the wrong job. They picked the wrong job at a time in history where people are noticing what people are doing to other people, regardless of the color of their skin, the income, or whatever they make. Because people realize that at the end of the day, the creator made all of us, and we all going back to the dirt, to where we came from. There's no little me's or big you's. We're all the same. We, we come from the dirt, we turn to the dirt. I agree. But in, the, in between that, I don't want to see any hurt. So some of these people do not need to be in these job capacities. I don't know why they went to school for it. You know, there's so many theories. They were bullied. They was that. They were bullied. Why are they bullying people? You know, why are they treating people? Well, was, the was Whatever it really was, I don't know, ma'am. But I'm just saying, that I may not all... survive this week being in jail. Well, I hope that you do. Officers, officers, literally out to treat me in a such a way. And if I say anything, you think, hell, that officer break my thumb, putting my handcuffs on. I never broke thumb before I came here. My body was functioning perfectly. And now, you know, it's like, we'll, we'll let a doctor, what, a week later, get an x-ray? They don't even have an x-ray machine here. So why are they not outsourcing? And everyone else I've seen go out but even yeah. minor things in a broken bone. I don't know the answer to that. I, I do. It's called, you know, a disparity in treatment based on the skin color of the person being treated. Okay. I, very I, I, intelligent. I, I have the answer to it because every other theory that I weigh doesn't make sense. Only the theory of the impartial treatment, the inequality and the injustice. I mean, I mean, this is a theme in America. Like Black Lives Matter. My skin is brown, so I still Mr. don't Houston, we I still don't matter. Ma'am, I know you, you want to cut me off and this and that and all of that. But this is my my time, my day in court of a due process. Well, we have, we I can't, have process, your I can't care. process what's going on with me right here, right now. I'm not talking about no past, no future. This is going on right now with me. You're sitting there fine content, don't have to worry about these things. Your children get to see you today. They get to know you, love you. My children don't know where I am because they won't let me use the phone. And as we've explained, there's unfortunately nothing that any of us on you this have a right to use Zoom the phone. call can do. You have a right to a phone call. They'll let you, you they'll let right, you use the these phone. rights. They won't, ma'am. You saying that, but they won't. They won't even let me go to the hospital. Okay. It's good that you're saying they will, but they're in control here. I have two other people that I need to see today. So I'm going that's, to ask. That's you fine. To I'm not okay. trying to hold up any proceedings or anything else. I'm just saying if the next court date, they say that Mr. Tushin has uh, been involved in an unfortunate event, it means that they've done something to me. All right. Well, I, I, I sincerely hope that doesn't happen. Oh, no, I think it's going to happen, man. Okay. When I just had a guy being very rude because I could barely get up to get my shoes on because I have a broken hand to tell me to hurry the fuck up. There's other people that need to go to court. And that's coming from your correction officer, your esteemed, honest, trustworthy correction officer.
That's all right. Three more. Bowman, Jessa, and Twista. I might as well send we're back on the record with Mr. Tucson. Yes, ma'am. Case number 220167SM. Ms. Akiriak and Ruli, how are we proceeding after your discussion with Mr. Tucson? Your Honor, um, due to my inability to meet with Mr. Tucson before today's date, um, we would be requesting an adjournment. Um, we'd also like to address bond. I'm trying to look at that. Mr. Tucson's bond in this case is set at $10,000, 10%. Is there anything else holding him? No. That's what I'm trying to check, Judge. I do not think so, but I couldn't tell if there was a new charge. There's a pending felony. That's, that's Thursday I go to court. <laughs> The 10,010% is on the felony as well. 10,010% At least as of September 1st. The, and, that's, that's what it is, Your Honor. It's, I go to court on the 3rd on that, on uh, oh, can I get Probable 3rd? cause conference is this Thursday, looks like. Yes, oh, Your Honor. I would argue the bond then also. So I, I really need to get to the hospital. I've had a... Possible broken thumb for the last week with no medical care. No x rays, nothing. And just from my understanding, based on my conversation with Mr. Tucson, he said that he's um, experiencing some serious medical issues um, due to, I guess, the way that the jail is set up with their medical personnel. Um, they're unable to address those issues. Specifically, he has an issue with. Um, is it your thumb, Mr. Tucson? Yes, it's a um, it's it's is the break, a fracture, or some torn. I don't know because I haven't had an X-ray or MRI or anything to eliminate the possible causes or, or to even get a diagnosis because of the way this jail facilitates its health needs to the inmates. And the last time that he was here in custody, he was complaining about a fractured shoulder, a fractured foot, and no, no. The last time I was here, I contracted a Mercer, and I had to stay in the view of them midterm for three weeks because I actually did have Mercer, and you know, uh, I almost died. The doctor said within well, two I, days. I don't have the authority to reduce your bond on the felony. That's no, no. I didn't say on the other I'm one. I'm just saying to. this case. That's that we are proceeding. So, I know you have no so authority. So on this case. On this case, the bond is staying in place and you're receiving credit for the time that you've been in custody. Okay, um, but I, I don't expect to be convicted of anything. Y'all already imposing a sentence without even adjudicating the case, Your Honor. No, actually, um, the reason that you're in custody on this case is because you didn't show uh, up your settlement. I mean, I miss, I miss court. I miss court. Right. So you, that's not the first time you've missed court on this case. That's no, why this is actually that's why you're in custody on this case. And we set the bond so that you could receive credit in case you're convicted. Okay. But the ten thousand dollar bond is set on the felony case. And so you'll have to wait and see what Judge Simpson does about that on Thursday. I don't have authority to change that. Bond. No, no, I didn't say for Simpson. This is Simpson's case. No. Exactly. That's He's, what I'm saying. To your discretion on this case, high, you're, you're projecting case another judge's uh, intention. Okay, Mr. Tucson, um, I'm going to adjourn this. Ms. Akira, I don't, don't want to adjourn. I want to proceed. I want to proceed. I do not want to adjourn. I told the attorney I did not want to adjourn. I want to proceed. Do you want to set a date for another jury trial? No, I want to proceed. Right now, so that's, what that, that's what proceeding right now means. You whatever you didn't this show court up hearing is, trial. if it's jury selection, if it's no, whatever it is, no, I would like to proceed. I don't want to burn. I don't want to sit in this jail with Mute a health him. concern that may get worse. Mr. Tucson, you didn't come when we had jury trial set for you. You didn't show up. I don't have juries sitting here every day, so you have to start over at the pretrial stage. Or we can set it for a final settlement conference, Ms. Akiriak and Ruli, if you're ready to go to jury. 
We can set it for 507. All right. Motions, exhibit and witness list. Cutoff date is November 17th, 2022. And jury instructions need to be filed with the court and exchanged between the parties, although you may have already done that because this case was set for jury trial once before. December 1st, 2022 at 9 a.m. is the final settlement conference in person. December 12th, 2022 is jury selection at 9 a.m. in person. Trial will begin as soon uh, as we're able to after we select the jury, depending on which the oldest case will go first. The oldest unsettled case will go first that morning. And bond remains as set if you need to ask the court to hold another hearing after the probable cause conference to talk about bond conditions, you're welcome to do so. In the meantime, they're staying the same. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. We're, we're all set with Mr. Tucson for today. Court calls case of people of state of Michigan versus Reginald Tucson. I can see it now. We're ready in that matter. Rob Bob, people. Warren Brown, Deputy Chief, Public Defender, appearing with and on behalf of Mr. Tucson. Mr. Uh, Tucson, could you please state your name for the record? Yes, state your name. Oh, it's Reginald Tucson. Yeah, they probably want to lift the camera up a little bit. Yeah, you want to flick. I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> Better? Uh -huh. All right. No, it's not. It's, they can it's flick it up. So. I can see him. No, good. Can see him. Right. I, good morning, Justin. Good morning, Mr. Jason. All right, what are we doing? Uh, today is the date and time set for the probable cause conference. Mr. Tucson is respectfully requesting that this matter be set for a preliminary examination. He also would like for his counsel to be heard on bond. All right. Um, in person or via Zoom? Um, I believe that Zoom would be appropriate in this matter. Yes, I don't want to lose my place of residence um, if he can lower it. Uh, and the time for bond, we'll, we'll address that. Mr. Le oh. Preliminary, would the people be ready on the 8th? Yeah. Uh, we'll make a try. This is on Zoom, so yeah. Okay. Preliminary examination will be November 8th, 2022, 9 a.m. That will be before Judge... Who? <laughs> Burke. Burke. Oh. Okay. All right. Yes, that's the bond. Yes, Your Honor. My client would like the court to know um, that he does have um, both income and a place to stay. Um, if the court would allow him to be released, he would stay at Ryer, that's in Ann Arbor, at apartment 473A. Um, he does have a steady income. He receives uh, disability. Um, he would be able to uh, pay for the place to stay. He would follow all conditions and requirements of the court, have no contact with the complaining witnesses in this matter, and he would respectfully appear to all future court dates. He's asking that he be allowed a personal recognizance bond. Um, before I hear from the people, uh, Mr. Tucson was originally arraigned um, he was ordered by the court on August 6, 2022, to enroll in immediate supervision uh, under community corrections with drug testing within 48 hours of his release from the jail. He failed to do so. He was released on the 18th of August in the evening hours. He did not contact um, or report to community corrections. And his preliminary exam date or PCC date uh, from the original arraignment was set for September 1st. And on that date, he did not appear um, on September 1st and the bench warrant was issued. We then do not hear from Mr. Tucson, um, at least in terms of the arraignment date until sometime late October. Yeah, I can address that. Um, I, was, I was having health problems and then they said they advised me to go. They didn't say it was a court order. I never received any. I, I mean, I'm serious, Justice. I didn't receive any paperwork 
on that matter. And when I had talked to you, I promised you that I would appear because in lieu of, if I didn't appear, I would end up in jail. <laughs> and I was telling you, I had just moved into a place. And I, I, and I didn't, that was not on my paperwork. No, no, apparently my client um, believed that it was a suggestion. Um, by it was the, not on my paperwork. He did not understand it uh, to be an order. He indicates that he will follow all future orders of the court. He understands that there's no distinction between a suggestion, a hint, a hope, and an order from the court. He gets it. I'm sure he does now. Um, I've given him a preliminary examination in five days um, because we don't hear from him for about almost two months after he was released. I had health problems, fractured foot. <laughs> Man, I'm, well, I don't, and I, I don't have any of that. We I set a preliminary examination in five days. So um, motion for bond reduction tonight is bond will continue at this point in time. And uh, Judge I'm going to be homeless in five days, sir. Sure, Thank you. Sure, be homeless sure, Judge Burke can review his bond. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Good participation, Mr. Dowling. All right. <laughs>